Welcome to another edition of All Things Rome. I'm Doug Walker. My guest today is Mimi Weed, who is uh, the, one of the owners of Mel and Mimi's Boutique in Rome. But we're not here to talk about boutique things today. Darn. <laughs> we're here to talk about the great outdoors and one of the true jewels of uh, the city of Rome today, and that's the Marshall Forest. It's one of what I've always considered three urban wildernesses in Rome. You have the Jackson Hill area, you have the GE Trails out at Girard Park, and then really before, well, not before, but the Marshall Forest has been designated, <laughs> been around, and, and been an urban wilderness for folks in Rome and Floyd County and all of Northwest Georgia for many, many, many years. And, and Mimi, you, you know a little bit of, of, of the backstory of, of how the Marshall Forest came to be because, because your husband, Robert Weed, um, was, was a part of the family that originally Correct. owned that land. Yes. So Robert's cousin was um, Mac Marshall, and Mac uh, in the 1960s donated or gave um, close to 300 acres of his property um, off of Horse Lake Creek Road um, to the Nature Conservancy. So it truly became Georgia's first national landmark in 1966. It was designated a national natural landmark. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, until I became familiar with the Marshall Forest, I didn't know that there was such a thing as a national natural landmark. But one of the things that makes it so unique is that it is, it is considered a virgin forest. It's yes. never been cut. Never, never. I like, like with an mm -hmm. N, never mm -hmm. ever been cut, which means like say it's a, it's a virgin forest inside the city limits and it's the largest virgin forest inside the city limits we believe anywhere in the country, isn't yes, that right? Yes, and, and as of date, the Nature Conservancy still has it marked as that, the only virgin forest within city limits urban um, in the United States, which it's like anything else, I think sometimes you can take for granted that you have this treasure you know, right here in Rome, Georgia, and literally for me, um, in my backyard. And growing up, you would drive down this beautiful drive of horse leg, and you would say, oh, this is so pretty. But you didn't really know why it was so pretty. It was because it's been untouched, you yeah. know. And you are driving through the Marshall Forest to your left and your right, I guess for a good two miles, three miles, um, as you travel down horse leg. But yes, my husband um, deceased now, but uh, Robert moved here in the 70s when he lost his cousin, Mac. He um, was in Munich at the time and uprooted his family and moved to Rome and really at that time created Friends of the Forest to bring attention, awareness, and care um, on a local level um, to the forest. And over the years, there's just always been, we hope hundreds, you know, to visit and to enjoy it, and visitors come to Rome, of course, and to visit the forest. Um, but locally, to maintain the trails and things that are um, needed to keep um, the Braille Trail and safe um, for visitors, and the other trails, which I believe with for the, the Dorsey Trail and other trails, um, new bridges and things are being worked on. Yeah, so. I, it's, it's all the time. There's mm -hmm. work goes on, and I know your family is, is yes. still still does a lot of that work. Right. But, you know, the forest itself has over 300 different species of flowers, mm -hmm. about 55 different trees. It's got two ecosystems that are considered endangered by the uh, Nature Conservancy: uh, a, a lowlands shortleaf pine and and a montane, which is fancy word for mountain, <laughs> longleaf pine, which are both endangered ecosystems over there. And, and Marty Cipollini uh, yes. would be a wonderful person for us to maybe talk to one day about that. But Definitely. one of the really special things about the Marshall Forest is that it is the home to the largest population of the Scutellaria montana, yes. which is the, uh, the genus and species name for the uh, uh, large flowered skull caps, mm -hmm. largest population of this endangered flower in the state of Georgia. And, and these are, I mean, they're, they're cute as they can be. They're, they're tiny. <laughs> yes, they are. They're tiny mm -hmm. and, and the flowers look like little Smurf caps. Yes, yes, yes. They're, they're, you're, they're very unique in that way. And um, I do feel like people do travel and do go into the forest during the seasons that the um, 
plant grows to see that plant specifically, you know, nature lovers, which we, we love that, yes. And of course, uh, I guess one of the other big things is uh, the Braille Trail, mm -hmm. which- uh, Probably the most commonly used. Right, mm -hmm. it's the most commonly used. It's right down near, near the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I know just in the last year, we've had an Eagle Scout project in right. there. Thank goodness was, for Eagle Scouts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were replacing the yeah. posts. Yes. I noticed the other day when I was out there walking that I mean, between the old posts, there used to be a cable yes. that I guess the blind people walked. That right. cable is not back on there yet. But there, that's, yeah, that's um, Caroline Alford, um, who's with the um, Georgia Confederate Garden Club um, Federation. She's um, so instrumental with um, funding and raising money for the Marshall Forest. And yes, that's in the works. New roping. There's always things being refurbished. and. Um, Robert's son, Mark Wee, does live in Rome, and he's um, always a few times a year out there cleaning up as much as you can touch, you know, the forest and the main parking. There's also parking now across the street, um, which just allows um, groups, to, like school groups or vans, to have more turnaround space and to be able to enjoy the Braille Trail. But I'll just see people who are just they just need like a good 15 minute retrieve from life, you know, and it's so easy just to park and walk that braille trail and just get in touch with nature and it kind of just settles the soul and then you're, you know, back on your on your way. So it's wonderful just seeing it used for that purpose as well. Well, that, that braille trail is a great place to settle the soul for sure because <laughs> yes. it's low and it's relatively yes, flat. Yes. Most all ages can handle that beyond yeah. people with any kind of disability. Yeah, and and even people in wheelchairs could yes could deal yes. with it. A few routes maybe to deal with, but yes. But now on the other hand, <laughs> the Dorsey Trail, yes. which goes up the side of the right. mountain almost to the shorter campus, uh -huh. basically, yes. that's about a 1.3 mile trail. It is that will take your breath away. It will. You <laughs> and sometimes if you're me, you might go the wrong direction. So you could be adding another you know half a mile to your um, to your trail um, walk, but yes, it does go up. There is a beautiful view once you get to the top and, and come back down. Yes. So it's a fabulous place. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned early on uh, about dri the drive down Horse Lake Creek yes. Road and both on both sides of the yes. highway. I'm not sure a lot of people realize that on the east side of the mm -hmm. highway, on the river side of the highway, Correct. you've got about 110 acres it, over there that mm -hmm. is part a third of the, of the forest. forest is on the uh, on the east side, like you said, near the river and. Um, maybe Katie from the Nature Conservancy you could have one day because she is, I love to hear her speak because she just is, just knows so much. And I think she's got future hopes and dreams of how that can be utilized for citizens more uh, here in Rome. You, you were one step ahead of me because that was one of the things that I know that uh, when I was with Katie last fall on, on, a, on an event, we were talking about the potential for perhaps cutting a few trails through that eastern section yes. of the forest as yes. well. Yes, and the Bacon Grove, which is very picturesque, I think mm -hmm. um, maybe a lot of people don't even know that that is part of the Marshall Forest. And it's just it's a pretty, um, especially I love it when the seasons change, going into spring, and now here we are going into fall, and it's just a, just a beautiful drive. Yeah, it re really is. Now, let's get around to an, a, a big event that's coming up on October 15th. Yes. The Robert Weed Memorial Nature Walk. Yes. Tell us a little bit about okay. how that came to be. Okay, so Mary Harden Thornton, who um, a lot of Romans know, who's very active in our city with um, nature and keeping it clean and beautiful, um, she created this walk. Uh, this will be the sixth, seventh uh, yeah, year? Yeah, sixth or seventh, yeah. I should know this. I'm going to go with seven. I'm going to okay. go with seven. And um, so I think the whole idea was, well, first of all, she was friends with Robert and um, appreciated what he did over the years um, with, I guess, really for well, almost 40 years after Max um, passing to help with anything that needed to be done with the forest. And she just wanted to acknowledge that through a remembrance, but not only that, to also bring attention to, and I think it did, all of a sudden there were people coming out bringing attention like, hey, this is a jewel right here in Rome. And I had more people say, I'm embarrassed to say I have grew up here and I've never, I've never been into the Marshall Forest. And you, once again, we can always sometimes take for granted what's in our backyard. Right. So with that, it just brings awareness that it's, that it's there, that it's for everyone, um, seven days a week. And so yeah, with the walk, it just, and what's wonderful, we usually have a speaker or someone who just brings a different perspective of knowledge about the Marshall Forest 
And um, it's just easy, you know, you've been wonderful, Doug. You've attended probably all of them. And Most of them. It's just yeah. a nice hour. It's easy. You know, someone speaks and it's really the Braille Trail. If you want to go hike and do more of a strenuous hike, you can do that. But really, <laughs> it's just to learn more knowledge about um, the Marshall Forest. Well, it, it, it truly is. And, and at that event, as you say, you had a speaker, Marty Cipollini. Yes, we talked. Marty mm -hmm. has done it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Owen from uh, Darlington, he, Owen he Kenny has, has done yes, it. Yes. Katie Owens from the Nature Conservancy. We haven't talked a lot yet about the Nature Conservancy, but, but uh, Mac donated this to the Nature Conservancy yes. back uh, in the 1970s, I believe. Yes. Um, and Na Nature Conservancy actually manages that property now. They do some they do some controlled burns, yes, uh, which is something that I'm sure sure a lot of people don't necessarily understand the importance of forest of, of uh, forest fires uh, in a natural setting. It clears a lot of undergrowth, mm -hmm. and that's that's part of the reason uh, that, you know that we're able to to manage the forest so well, and we don't yes. have a lot of the big wildfires like they have out west. Right, right. And Katie, once again, has been so inst instrumental. Um, Malcolm, um, for years, who you know, you can be spread so thin with Georgia and the Nature Conservancy, but Katie lives here in town, and I just think that that's a wonderful asset for us. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, Malcolm, Malcolm Hodges uh, was one of the directors uh, for, for the Nature Conservancy, and uh, Malcolm knows about as much about that forest uh, absolutely. Prob probably yes. as, as anybody. He's, he's just an absolute amazing person. And, and one of the things that they've just been doing for the last couple of years is having an alternative spring break program where, where they bring in college students who don't necessarily want to go have a big party in Florida or, or yes. somewhere. They want to come in and do some work over there. And does wonderful. the family help out some during that well, as well? Um, Katie always brings it to our knowledge. They're going to be there. And I know in past years, if they've, like when they were doing um, testing out slow burns, um, one break, spring break, they used some of our area to park. And well, we help in any way that we can. I know that Mark Weed has helped with some of the scouts just you know as long as we get a heads up on how we can help or participate we'd love to be a part of that well it's it truly is a a jewel for for our community and the, the walk on on friday october 18th 15th does, this year 15th 15th <laughs> you're right yeah 15th my bad uh at two o'clock doesn't cost a thing right it does not cost a thing now um as you caroline Alford will speak and as always any donation is appreciated because once again that funding does go toward um the trails and um and these ideas of growth you know like you said on the east side by the river and ten dollars adds up we all and we always laugh but it's true i mean no no donations to too small or too big so but yes the event itself is um we invite everyone and there is no cost to okay. join us Friday, October 15th, 2 o'clock at the Marshall Forest. That is out, uh, what is it, about three miles outside the uh, city? Or, or not outside the city, but right. uh -huh. down oh, off of mm -hmm. at Horse off, Lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. off of Horse Lake Creek Road. And, and Plenty it's of just, parking and yeah, just good. come comfortable and ready to walk or just learn more about um, you know, this treasure that's here in Rome, Georgia. And, and it really is an easy walk along the, the Big Pine Braille Trail, which yes. was that actually developed by Dr. Lewis Lips at Shorter? Yeah, or? I would hate to guide you wrong, but I'm gonna say that I think that it was. Dr. Mm -hmm. Lewis Lips, that, that's a female Lewis. Yes, Lewis. yes. was good uh, friends with uh, Mac, McLean Marshall and um, was very devoted to the land, to the yeah. forest. And, mm -hmm. and she was uh, one of the great biology professors up at Shorter College many, many years ago and it really had a had an important role it's yes. it's just really neat to come out and see some it of the stonework that's out there well right that's off the what i was going to mention when you said dr lips um when she passed there is a monument in her honor that um robert weed who's also an artist like mac um created and it's the circle of life and it's there and then there's the stonework that mac created in the 70s that was just the main monument of the marshall forest so all right well mimi thank you so much for being with us yes and, uh, thank you for having me we look we look forward to a great walk open to anybody yes. in our community please come out and join us i'm sure it's going to be a beautiful afternoon yeah young old whatever come yes. on out and uh, enjoy a, a beautiful walk learn more about this jewel in our community and uh, we hope to see you there Yes, thank you. Thank you for being with us.